What's going on guys? It's Derek here from Simnet Nutrition. I'm back again for another Ask Me Monday. So this is a series of videos I do every Monday to answer some commonly asked questions and some not so commonly asked questions from you guys in the comment section down below. So if you have any questions for next week, definitely leave them in the comments down below. So I usually answer short questions that revolve around health, nutrition, veganism, calisthenics, exercise in general, weightlifting, building muscle. So I'm out here in nature again this week. I'm actually like right in the middle of the forest, like literally not even a path to where I am. <laughs> I went off the path a little bit. I think I lost it, but I know it's back that direction. I saw a few things over here. I wanted to check out a few mossy trees and that sort of stuff for the B-roll footage. But I've actually never been down this trail, so it's pretty fun. It is very beautiful down here. I thought it wasn't gonna be as pretty as it is, so I walked quite a ways into the forest before I started filming because I like to have a nice backdrop where I talk to you guys. And at first it was just kind of a gravel path, but it's turned into like a beautiful mossy, classic Pacific Northwest forest and it is gorgeous. So the sun's out, the weather is getting better here, spring is just around the corner, I couldn't be more excited. And we have lots of good questions to answer this week, so let's get started. I'm truly out here adventuring this week, that's why I thought I'd wear this sweater my adventurer sweater. I have to thank Cotton Off Clothing for sending this to me. These guys are awesome. They have some awesome vegan clothing like this hat they also sent me and some not so vegan specific clothing like this as well. Really cool stuff. Thanks again guys for the package. I'll definitely put a link in the description down below if you guys want to check out their stuff. They have some great stuff and I just wanted to say thanks. They're not paying me to say this but I just wanted to say thank you guys for sending me out the package. But let's get started with those questions because we have lots to answer today and there's some good ones. All right so as usual I have the questions on my iPhone here. So nothing asks, hey Derek, why are you not practicing many great calisthenic skills? We would love to see you do human flags and the planche. So yeah, I would love to see myself do the human flag and the planche as well. So the reason uh, I don't, I do practice those moves, but I don't practice them enough. They're really, really hard and they're really, really hard on the joints. The reason I started to do, sorry, I'm just like climbing here over this log because I got too far off the trail. Whoa, I almost landed on this massive slug. Look at this thing, guys. Wow, so you can see that's a big slug. Like, that's my finger beside it. Anyways, enjoy your life, bud. <laughs> So yeah, I would love to learn those, but they're really, really difficult. Like I did learn the front lever, which was a good milestone for me. I also learned the muscle up, which was another one, but the human flag is really, really tough and I don't have anywhere really that I can practice it all that much. So those movements are really difficult to get if you're not practicing them consistently. And as far as the planche goes, it's really hard on like on my muscles and my joints and everything like that. So along with like working out and trying to like build up my physique using calisthenics, it's really hard to like practice those movements uh, consistently at the same time. But I will start practicing the planche and I will start practicing human flags more because I would love to get those and I'd love to show you guys. So yeah, maybe I'll start my journey to try and get them by like the end of summer. That would be pretty crazy if I could. At least the human flag. I think I could do that one by the end of summer. We'll see. But yeah, good question, nothing. I would like to see myself doing those too. Oh wow, look at this. This is cool. This is like someone's like old campsite or something. Got like an old kettle there, and then some old cans. Old bottle. Oh wow, this is like some old sort of pot as well. Crazy, it's like ceramic. I wonder what else there is around here. I love finding spots like that. I love exploring. I love being an adventurer. <laughs> and then now there's this pathway, huh. Do I go that way or that way? See where this takes us, the little one. I always like to go down the path less beaten. This is cool, it like opens up into this kind of like mossy clearing. Yeah, that's sweet, but I'm actually gonna head back to that other trail because this forest that I'm in is actually like massive and it's close to sundown and I don't want to have any problems getting lost or anything. I already kind of don't know where I am. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is the trail. Okay, next question comes from Sam UL. Samuel. <laughs> Derek, love the vids. Thanks, Samuel. My question is simple. Who are your heroes and who do you aspire to be like? So when I read this, I had to think for a little while and I was like, who were my heroes? And Nobody really came to mind all that quickly. There was 
one name in particular who I'll tell you in a second, but the reason like no names came to mind, I think, is because I pick little bits and pieces of people's personalities and character that I like, and I try and bring those into my life and adopt those to how it works for me. But I don't necessarily like just model myself after somebody or idolize somebody in particular who I want to be like or I want to emulate. So I guess that's kind of why. I just want to be like the best version of myself, as cheesy as that sounds, I do. But if I had to say one name in particular, I would probably say Rich Roll, and a lot of you guys probably expected that. If you don't know who he is, definitely check out his podcast, check out his YouTube channel, check out everything he does because it's all amazing, he's super inspiring, and the best part about him is he's an amazing resource for other inspiring people as well. I've gotten to learn about so many cool and amazing, smart, talented, influential people through his podcast that I never would have found out otherwise, so definitely check him out. But the reason I kind of idolize him because he is a guiding light and a safe landing pad for so many people who are trying to transition to a healthier lifestyle. And that's who I aspire to be like. I aspire to be someone that inspires other people, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And he has just such a good, calm, collected, but motivated and powerful demeanor about him that I just love and he seems to ask all the right questions. He gives people, you know, good time to speak. He doesn't interrupt. Uh, he's super intellectual, but he is also, you know, emotional as well and shows his feelings. And as a male, it's really nice to see that in somebody that you look up to. Someone that I look back and used to look up to, I don't know too much about them anymore, was Dan the man, the life regenerator with the master plan, Mr. Dan McDonald. If you guys don't remember him, look up some of his older videos. He was a big influence to me uh, when I started to get into this healthy lifestyle. And I want to be that for other people. I want people to look back and go, man, when I was getting into that healthy lifestyle, that Derek from Simnet Nutrition Guy helped me so much and totally changed my path in life to this healthier, more loving, more compassionate, human being that is what i want to be to people so uh dan he used to do like juicing outside of his rv he was just like living on the road eating tons and tons of raw fruits and vegetables juicing had so much energy he was really like beautiful bright skin glowing and was so passionate about this healthy food and i was like i just want a piece of that i want a piece of what he's having so that was one of the major influences when i first started on this healthy lifestyle so yeah i don't know what he's up to now he kind of changed his tone a little bit uh, you know, throughout his journey, but uh, that happens to us all. Hopefully not me though. I'll always stay real, guys. So the next question comes from Smasher660. Do the bunnies you made friends with still live up there or was that a different place? So this person's referring to the bunnies that I befriended that lived at the top of that little mountain where I did my last Ask Me Monday at. And yeah, they were these bunnies that were just up there uh, and they were not enclosed. There were no houses around that, you know, they lived at or anything like that. They were just like out in the wild. I don't know if somebody had abandoned them or what. There's thousands and thousands of bunnies in Parksville. It's kind of a problem here. But these ones, for whatever reason, took a liking to me and it took a long time. It took quite a while. It took me going there many weeks at the same time of day at sunup was when I would go there and I would give them like little bits of food and I'd leave it where I would see them like chilling and they were really scared of me at first and they'd run away but then after a little while they started to get a little closer a little closer and then uh you know by the end of it they were just like jumping all over me and climbing on me and they'd like run out to see me when I called their names so yeah those bunnies uh they're not around anymore they didn't last the winter i went up there a few times to try and feed them when it was like really harsh out and there was like lots of snow but i couldn't find them around anywhere so yeah kind of sad i don't know what happened to them but hopefully i make some new bunny friends in the future <laughs> so you new viewers can get to know them but yeah that was pd bun bun and gray boy they were my homies up there lots of good times with them although oddly enough i'm like extremely allergic to bunny rabbits sometimes when i'd get back in my car and i'd like rub my eyes they'd just like explode <laughs> Uh, but it was totally worth it. I loved those rabbits. Man, it is so green in here. Look at this, guys. Crazy, and it's like just the start of March, so yeah. By like May, it is like, you can imagine how crazy it is in here. Well, I've never been in here before, but all the forests around here. 
the next question comes from Linz Nicole. Hi Derek, just wondering your opinion on maca powder and if you think it is something that should be included in a vegan diet as a superfood. Thanks. Ah yes, maca. The Peruvian ginseng, the colorful potato of the high Andes. I'm familiar with this. <laughs> Uh, so I actually consume maca and I like maca. I do like maca. I don't think it's a necessity that you consume it. So should we have it as a superfood? Well, there is no real official term for superfood. It's definitely like a general term. So I mean, you know, just so you guys know moving forward, not that I care if people use that term, uh, superfood, but it doesn't actually have like an official definition. So I just want you guys to know that there, if you see superfood written on a label of something, you know, there's no governing body that's sort of saying whether it is or isn't a superfood, just so you know. If you can afford it and you have a good source of maca, gelatinized maca, then I think that you should definitely consume it if you like it. But if you don't like it and you don't have the money for it, whatever, I don't think you're gonna be losing out on any health. So some of the science does show that it's beneficial for our endocrine system and our sex hormones. For both men and for women, it's supposed to help to like balance hormones. It can help to reduce the size of like the prostate in men. Uh, it's a really good source of iron though. That is like for sure, definitely a good source of iron. Um, and it tastes really great and it has been shown to be energizing for some people. So I think, yeah, if it's something that you like and you can afford, then go ahead and get it. But I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Vivo Life does have a really great one. That's the one that I use and it is a gelatinized maca. You want it to be gelatinized um, because that means that it's been lightly cooked and it's a lot easier for our body to absorb and it's also a lot more concentrated as well. So go for a gelatinized maca. Yeah, if you guys want to use that one from Vivo Life, you guys know my discount code already, but I'll put it up there. Derek 10 for 10% off if you guys want to try it out. It tastes amazing. It has like a burnt kind of caramel taste. It's really, really good in smoothies, really good in oatmeal as well. They actually cook the maca root up like whole and they eat it like that, I believe, in Peru. So anyways, yeah, the, some science shows that it's beneficial for those things and some shows that it's not. So one thing that it has shown to be is like an adaptogen. So in order for something to be an adaptogen, it has to bring balance and health to the body's organs without any harm or unwanted side effects. So I don't know if that's the real definition of adaptogen, but that's what's coming to my head right now. And maca definitely does that. It definitely does that for sure. All right, next question. Oh, yes. Okay, so this was like a little bit of a conversation that went on in the comment section of one of my videos. And I just thought it was funny. So I wanted to include, uh, include it and then touch on it a little bit. Sarah Whittle asks, are plants less important than animals? And then RichieBoy87 answers, plants are much more important than animals. Without plants, there is no life, no animals. And then Sarah Whittle comes back and says, if what you're saying is true, then why would you eat something that is more important than something else? So that kind of made me like scratch my head for a minute. I had to think about how I would answer that. And then I spent so much time like thinking about how I would answer that, that I decided just to answer it here. So let's go with that. Plants are more important than animals. Why would we eat plants then? Well, if you guys didn't know, animals have to eat plants. So animals would have to eat a lot more plants in order to make the calories necessary for us to survive than if we were to just eat the plants on their own. So if we really did want to save plants, and not eat these important plants, we'd actually be saving more plants just by eating the plants directly than by eating the animals that are eating the plants. But something else that's important to remember, I think this is a silly question to answer, but I hope you guys get entertainment from it at least. I wanna hear what you guys think in the comments down below. How would you guys answer that? If I find an apple tree, let's say, and I walk up and I pick one of the apples, the apple tree does not die. The apple tree continues to grow I go, I eat that apple, and then I throw the core with the seeds in it away, and then that apple core and its seeds have potential to make many more trees and then continue to grow like that. If I walk up to a chicken and grab its wing off it, it would not do nearly as well as that apple tree. I know that for a fact. You couldn't plant that wing and grow more chickens. You know, that animal is probably gonna bleed out if not suffer a whole lot. And uh, you know, the same goes for like lettuce. Like I know if I'm growing lettuce in my garden and I pull a couple pieces off the lettuce, it happily just continues to grow while I get to eat that lettuce. And then eventually at the end of the year, it will, um, 
it'll start to seed and then I can plant those seeds and grow more lettuce. So yeah, I think that's why we should be eating plants and not animals, even though plants and animals are both important. <laughs> I don't know, it's a silly question. Anyways, let's move on, next question. Next question comes from Jesse Bourgeois. Hey Derek, loving these Q&A videos. I really appreciate what you do. Thank you for that. My question is, would you ever eat bugs, crickets, etc., as a sustainable protein source? No, I wouldn't eat bugs as a sustainable protein source. Um, one, because it's gross, and two, because I don't have to. I get lots of protein from plants, all the protein that I need from plants. However, I don't think it's as gross now that I'm a vegan as when before I was a vegan, I would have thought it was much grosser, but now I just see it as a living creepy crawly thing, just as I see shrimp as a living creepy crawly thing that I used to eat. So, uh, <laughs> I know it's like a big thing these days that they're making like cricket protein powder and stuff like that, and cricket is actually like really high in protein. It's something like 70% protein. I think it's almost double the amount of protein per, per gram or whatever in weight than meat is, which is pretty crazy. But we don't need that much protein to survive. We don't need nearly that much protein to survive or to live or to thrive, whatever. We don't need that much protein, period. We can get all the protein we need in plant foods. And if you guys have ever seen an insect farm, Oh God, they're, it's grosser than anything you could even imagine. Yeah, and definitely not vegan. Bugs are living creatures too. Ugh, don't eat them, no thanks. Oh, look at that little bug. All right, next question comes from Devil. What do you think of kombucha? Isn't it a vegan source for B12? So yeah, what do I think of kombucha? Well, a B12 question first. Yeah, it does have some B12 in it. I wouldn't consider it a reliable enough source of B12 to stop supplementation of B12. I would still supplement with it. But yes, you're right, it does have some B12 in it. But from company to company, from batch to batch, it's going to vary. And as far as how much you absorb from that is questionable as well. So I would definitely still take a supplement. But you're right, there is B12 in kombucha and other fermented foods as well. But what do I think of it? I think that if you like it, you should enjoy it sometime. Uh, I, we actually have a batch right now that we are like fermenting at home and I don't know man I've done it before and it's definitely like sketchy the thing that's growing on the top is weird It tastes kind of like vinegary and strange uh, It's not something that I'm a hundred percent certain on whether or not I need it in my life in order to be at my maximum health So yeah, I don't know. That's my thoughts on it. It's it's weird if you've ever made it It's like you put black tea in a pot and you boil it and then you put tons of sugar in it and then you add this like scoby thing on the top which is like this uh, mushroom looking growth and then that turns the sugars and caffeine into like antioxidants and probiotics and that sort of stuff so kind of weird I don't know what to say about it but definitely I'm sure the store-bought ones are safe and if you're growing it on your own like Crystal and I are right now uh, I don't know man buyer beware because it's sketchy <laughs> Wow so this spot is so awesome look at this little mini watering hole in the middle of the forest with like the log bridge that goes over it so cool. Oh wow, it's called Yoda's Swamp. I think I'm gonna head back because I actually don't really know where my car is from here. So <laughs> I'm gonna start going back, but I got two more questions to answer. <sighs> So the next question comes from John Abak. I have a serious question, okay? Let's get ready for this. Whoa, serious light. What do you think of lab meat? And do you think vegans can eat it since no animals were harmed or killed, just a few cells taken from them and grown into much bigger muscle tissue? So yeah, lab-grown meat, okay. Well, admittedly, I don't know too much about it. I, you know, we've been hearing about it on the news here and there and it used to be like so expensive and now it's getting to be more affordable and they see it as like a viable option in the future. 
I don't have any desire to eat it. That's why I've never looked into it. Like anytime I want something that is meat-like, if I just eat one of like, you know, uh, a, you know, faux meat chicken burger or vegan sausages, that type of stuff, it usually quenches any sort of desire that I have for those types of things. And I don't actually want meat. Like I don't want to eat an animal's flesh. So for me, that's why I haven't looked into it and that's why I admittedly don't know too much about the process I don't know. I'm not one to say whether or not it would still be considered like vegan I don't I would say no, I don't think so um, But I'm definitely not the one who decides that uh, But no, I don't think it would be considered vegan. That's weird. That would be weird vegan meat but I would definitely prefer people eating lab-grown meat over eating, you know, meat from factory farms or from hunted animals or from whatever. I would definitely prefer that. We do have to remember though that meat isn't great for our health. We're not trying to increase our meat consumption by finding a more sustainable and more cruelty-free way of growing the meat. No, like we're just trying to get rid of that out of our diet, period. We don't, there's much more healthy things that we could be eating other than lab-grown meat or any type of meat for that matter. Oh man, I just saw a man walking, scared the living crap out of me. All right, he looks like he might be a meat eater, so I'm gonna be quiet about the not eating meat talk for a second here. <laughs> Make sure you can see my hat, though. <laughs> Hello. Good, how are you? Ah, he was a nice man. All right, what were we talking about? Kombucha, no, lab meat, lab grown meat. Oh yeah, um, I think I said everything I needed to about it. I mean, yeah, it's, there's other healthier options. What was the question? Let's get back to that. Let's answer the question. Do you think vegans can eat it? <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. You can eat whatever the heck you want. Not something that I would recommend, nor I would take part in. I don't remember this. Ugh. Hope I'm not lost. Stay ready. So you gotta get ready. All right, last question I have for this week. It's from Phil Burbrink. All right, Phil, what do you got for us here? I've been vegan for 10 months now, working out five days a week, best I have ever felt. Amazing, dude. This week, I have had two people tell me I look sick, face is so thin. Do you ever get that from people? I would love to have a great comeback line. They all think you're crazy when you say, I'm vegan now, thanks, Phil. All right, Phil, so you're killing it, man. Keep it up, don't worry about the haters. They're just jealous. But I do have that, I do get that. I don't get it much anymore because my face has looked like this for several years now. But I definitely did get it when I first went vegan, especially from my family. My mom, who was concerned about me, who cared about my health, who didn't want me to get sick, and who was misinformed about the vegan diet. I love her, and she eats vegan now. Good for you, mom. But. Uh, she was a little bit worried at first and I understand why and we're used to seeing people with a few extra pounds That's just kind of how society is and with you know sort of that puffy face I think a lot of the foods that we're eating are pro-inflammatory foods a lot of the chemicals that we're putting onto our skin that we're ingesting into our body are all pro-inflammatory and will lead to this sort of like ballooned out face that uh, is sort of common and uh, is normal nowadays like it was any different when I was younger But I just mean you know that is kind of expected that people have a more round face And when you do start seeing people's cheekbones or when their face does get thinner People do notice and they say yeah, wow Are you sick or what's happening or whatever so I get it that used to happen to me when I first went vegan I noticed that my face slimmed down a lot for sure and my nose even got more slender and skinnier too Which was really crazy like my nose used to be bigger for sure So yeah, it does happen and I understand that it can be frustrating because people can say like oh your face looks skinny and that's supposed to be like accepted in society, but then if you were to turn around and say hey your face looks fat, well, that you just can't say, right? So it's too bad, it's too bad that that's kind of like what is uh, accepted and what's not accepted, but that's just the reality we live in. So uh, I don't know what to say to you. It depends on the circumstance, it depends on the person, it depends on your personality. I mean, you could do something like if someone says, oh my God, your face is looking so thin. Well, at least mine's not like yours from all those inflammatory foods you're eating, big, round, and fat. You know, you probably wouldn't want to say that, but say, hey, thanks for noticing. I've been eating a vegan diet lately. I've noticed my body shedding a lot of excess weight, getting rid of some inflammation, and it certainly shows in my face. I feel amazing. Something like that, 
I think that could be the best way to answer it. If you, you know, if you're losing a ton of weight and you're not healthy and people, are, everyone's starting to say, oh my God, your face looks so gaunt, you look sick, all this, then maybe you wanna add some more fats into your diet and start eating some more. But if it's not legitimately a problem and it's just people being weird, then yeah, just kill them with kindness. Turn it into something positive. Anyways, I made it back out to the main path. My car is just up ahead, so I feel relieved. I just finished answering all the questions. The sun is out. I'm going home to make dinner. Life is good. Thank you guys so much for all the questions from last week. There were so many good questions in the comments of last week's video that I actually have like a bunch that I've already screenshotted and saved for next week. But leave your questions in the comment section down below. I'll either answer them there or I'll answer them in video format like this. Really appreciate you guys supporting me, watching my videos. Hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. It helps it to grow. helps more people see this message, my message, our message. Thank you guys so much. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. And here are some other videos I'd love for you guys to check out. Have a great day.